Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1791. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Greer, South Carolina, with a very special guest talking about one of my favorite marks, BMW. I'm with Michael Mitchell. Hey, Michael, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Yes, I am. All right, we'll have some fun here. Now, before I give you a proper introduction and we dive into what you spend your days doing, what's one little thing that most people maybe, just maybe, don't know about you? I would say uh, the only thing that people don't really know about me is even though I've been around the BMW community and and the club through my dad my entire life, I didn't join the club until I got hired here when I was 31. And that was about 20 years ago, right? Yes, it was. Well, then you've been a member for a nice period of time, but what, well, we'll get into that. I want to ask that quite yet of what got you into this, because I want you to carry that story forward. But uh, now they know you're a diehard BMW fan. So let me give you a proper introduction and we'll answer that question uh, coming up here. Michael Mitchell is a curator of collections at the BMW CCA Foundation Museum. The foundation is part of the BMW Car Club of America. I've been a member for over 25 years, an organization of over 60,000 enthusiasts. Their vision is to be a living repository of BMW information and to benefit the motoring community. The foundation has two key initiatives, education through their Tire Rack Street Survival and Teen Driver Safety Program, a program I put both my kids through when they were young, and history through their library, archives, and museum. And that's where Michael comes in. He was the first one hired for the foundation, having started there, as we said, back in 2001. So he's coming up on his 20-year anniversary. What started as some books donated to the foundation has grown to over 80 thousand items and major exhibits and displays by the way michael is also a navy veteran thank you for your service michael i really appreciate that thank you you're welcome we'll be back in just a minute to uh share more of michael's story and the bmw club but first a word from our valued sponsors that make this show possible so keep the seatbelts on the best way to protect and preserve your vehicles along with the meanings and memories and experience that they give you is with a quality made custom fit car cover from my friends at Covercraft. I purchased my first Covercraft cover from my 1967 Gia way back when I was in high school in 1975. At Covercraft.com, you'll find a multitude of indoor options, including form fit, fleece satin, and their very unique view shield. That's right. You can see your car right through the cover, but it's the sun that you really need to worry about. Quality outdoor options include weather shield HD and HP, sunbrella, Reflect, Carhartt, Evolution, and NOAA. Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and watercraft too. Your cover is custom tailored for your special vehicles and manufactured with the quality and attention to detail that's been their standard since 1965. And I've got a great deal for you. If you use the code ya 21 at Covercraft.com, they'll give you 10% off compliments of cars. Yeah, that's right. 10% off. Simply use the code YEAH21, Y-E-A-H-21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. Last year, I changed my collector car coverage to American Collectors Insurance. That's who now protects my Porsche Turbo, the one I call my Orange Crush. But did you know they also insure your valuable collections of automobilia and other collectibles if you're like me, you've invested in a lot of cool collectibles over the years. Those items are valuable. And if you were to lose them in a theft or a fire, well, try to get your normal homeowner's insurance to pay you what they're worth. Good luck with that. American Collectors Insurance provides you with assurance and confidence that your collectibles are fully covered. They insure a lot of items, including automobilia, wine, baseball cards, books, figurines, die-cast models, model trains, glassware, sports memorabilia, toys, and a whole lot more. American Collectors Insurance, they've been protecting us enthusiasts 
since 1976. They provide you with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a long history of taking care of their clients. Give them a call today for your personal agreed value quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine, Mark Rains here at Cars Yeah, American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. All right, Michael, we're back. So as we continue on your journey, I'd like to start with a mantra or a quote, some kind of saying that maybe has meaning for you or for the foundation. I like to say it's a nice way to get the tire spinning a little bit here on Cars. Yeah, both of us love to drive BMWs, but I'm going to let you take the wheel. Well, I'm going to use the uh, the mantra from the foundation, which is saving lives and saving history. Oh, well, what does that mean to the foundation? How would you describe that? It's pretty self-explanatory, but maybe go a little deeper with that thought. Uh, well, the the whole concept of the foundation when it was created was to have two things. The club was very active with driving schools and car control clinics and, and um, other driving activities since the beginning. But they realized there was a, a need for Uh, teenagers and um, defensive driving skills for them. When the foundation was created, the Street Survival Program is a defensive driving program for teenagers. Tire Rack is our title sponsor for that. So that's the saving lives. The saving history, you know, the club at that point in, in 2000, 2001 was, what, 31, 32 years old. There were plenty of club members who either had passed on or were getting up there in age and whatever kind of collections, not just the cars, but the, the memorabilia to go with it, there wasn't a place for it to go. The mm. families didn't necessarily always want the stuff. And so unfortunately, some of these collections ended up in the trash. So that's where the saving history comes in. In and wanting to save this stuff for others to enjoy and experience. And that's where my role in this foundation as a curator of collections is, is a big part of. Absolutely. You think about all the automobilia that people collect. Most of us who are automotive enthusiasts have some kinds of those items. I mean, there's a magazine out, Automobilia, a great magazine about collectible items. Many of these things have become incredibly valuable, not only from a sentimental perspective, point but collectability i mean some of the porcelain sign that are being sold for tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars blows me away makes me want to drive across this country and look at the size of barns and find some of this stuff let's dive into the museum aspect and more about what the museum is what it does what people can expect to see when we can finally all be free and go and see things again and also maybe touch on how you dealt with the pandemic because museums are one of those things that were really affected you had to shut down and how can people enjoy that so sure we were in the process of opening up our fourth major exhibit or building it at the time when the pandemic came out uh, building our fourth major exhibit genesis bmw from the beginning we were supposed to open up mid-may uh, as we traditionally did for the previous three exhibits but unfortunately with the pandemic we shut the museum down like everybody else did and we all started working from home for my job that was a little difficult so we had to kind of find other things that I could work on, like updating things on the website or or whatever. And about two weeks into it, the decision was made. We have a committee board member, uh, Jackie Jure, who's uh, the creative director for the the foundation and author of the exhibit books and several other people. So the committee decided that we were going to uh, video the uh, the exhibit and launch it on the day that we were supposed to open up so that way the public at least could get a teaser about it and then not knowing at that time how long would the pandemic be and how long would things be closed it would entice people to come and after about two weeks it dawned on me i I said you know i can't be at home and build this exhibit at the same time and and i'd already lost two weeks and now i was going to lose another two weeks because of the filming process and editing portion of it so um, i i came back into the building and did as much of the work that I could on my own. And then when it came time for other people to come in to help, as in like moving the cars, then we would mask up and and the people would come in and help. And we were able to get the exhibit built in time for uh, the May 1st 
video exercise, mm-hmm. and then the video came out um, something like May 15th or 18th uh, last year, and it's on our website. And it wasn't until uh, July that we decided we would quietly open up the doors to the public. We did all the the steps like every other business out there is doing, putting in sneeze guards and signage about uh, keeping your distance and uh, uh, hand sanitizer stations and all that kind of stuff. We, you know, we we went through the whole process just like everybody else, and we decided to open in July to quietly start getting people in here and testing the what we've done to see if this was enough to keep things safe. And then we had our big grand opening. I think it was last September or October for uh, the exhibit and and some of the car owners were able to come out uh, and some of the people were able, some of the visitors were able to come out and, and actually see the exhibit. Cool. Now you have of uh, this, what was that major exhibit about? Can you describe what people saw there and, and what they will see when they go? And we'll make, I'll make sure to put a link on Michael Shono's page so you can find a way to go find that video. But what did you have on display? What were you featuring? We wanted to go back to the beginning part of BMW, and we carried it up through 1965. So we have a um, a 315, basically a Dixie, all the way up to a 1965 3200 CS. We also have four motorcycles in this exhibit. So we believe this is the most comprehensive collection of early BMWs put together for one auto show or museum exhibit in the United States. Uh, We have 20 cars and four motorcycles. Like I said, ranging from the basically the Dixie to the 3200CS, we have a 507, two 503s, 327-28s, 328s. Uh, there are several cars in this exhibit where they're the only example of a BMW of this BMW model in the United States. Wow. That's really cool. Well, I got to see the video. It's awesome. It's wonderful. And I'll make sure I put a link to that so those listeners can go view that. And the BMW Club is so fun. I've been a member for a long time, 25 plus years. I've met so many great people through the club, visited many car events that were around this, drove in tours, took my kids on tours. And as I mentioned, the teen driving program that you guys put on invaluable, no doubt has saved so many lives and uh, uh, restricted chaos and and horrors from happening in families when these kids can go out and learn to be better drivers. That's how I started racing was I started with doing club days on the track, driving my M3 and seeing if I was comfortable at speed and getting more skill sets before I jumped into a race car. Uh, It's a wonderful program. So, so many things the BMW Club is doing is awesome. I always like to ask a challenge question, some kind of thing in your life or in business that really challenged you, maybe even a big failure you faced. But of course, the real lesson here is what did it teach you so you can move forward in a more positive way? So perhaps you can take us on a little journey here. Well, before I became the curator here at the foundation, after I got out of the Navy, it was I went through a series of jobs and realized they weren't they were they were fun, but they weren't careers. And so I thought, well, since I had been a technician in the Navy on F-14s, I thought, well, I could be a technician on cars. Of course, everybody has cars. Everybody needs cars to be repaired. Unfortunately, as I was going through school, I found that I'm horrible with electronics. And 20 years ago, you know, electronics were, I mean, obviously they were part of vehicles, but now today it's so much more. And I just kind of saw the writing on the wall that I wasn't going to have a very good career as an automotive technician if I just can't wrap my head around the electronics. And it was because of that that I was kind of in a this state of, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Uh, a club member, a longtime friend of my dad's and, and somebody that I had known for a few years, he said, you know, the BMW Car Club is moving from Boston to Greenville. And I wasn't in South Carolina. At that time, I was now in Florida finishing up a school there. And uh, I was told that the car club was moving down and they're going to need help. They're only bringing two people. And I'm thinking, well, I know what the car club is, but what kind of job? That's not a career. You know, what kind of job is a car club? But I was sort of desperate at that point and um, followed through with it. And well, 20 years later, it is my career. There you go. You know, this is a great story because cars, and I've learned this after talking with 1,790 plus people now, cars are really just a catalyst that bring people together and they become a way for people to meet, not only become friends, but also career opportunities. That's what I like to think about with cars. Yeah, is that people who want to work in the car world like you and I do, but don't can realize there are so many different kinds of roles and careers in this industry. 
massive variety. And yeah, who would have thought? You think of a car club as just, oh, it's a sideline thing, something fun to do on the weekends. No, there's actually some career. And I've had many people, curators of museums, as another piece of that on the show, directors of museums, directors of clubs, uh, all sorts of different people. So I'm so glad that that uh, opportunity came along for you. And even better, you smart enough to go, well, let me investigate this and see what this is all about. And look where it landed you. So bravo. <laughs> that was cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's take a short break and thank our sponsors. We come back. I'm going to dive a little deeper into your passion for cars here, Michael. So sit tight. We'll be right back. Okay. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. Join Linkage. Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. And guess what? You can save $10 if you use the code cars yeah at LinkageMag.com to get your subscription. So do it today. Have you looked under your hood recently? The average car today has more than 70 computers and 100 million lines of code. Today and tomorrow, being a professional technician requires an understanding of technology, computers, and electrical systems that are highly advanced and very complex. Cars yeah is honored to support TechForce Foundation as our charity of choice. Their efforts to help young people pursue a technical education and a fulfilling career as automotive techs is the key to an inspired life. Through scholarships, grants, and good old-fashioned hands-on experiences with vehicles, TechForce and Cars yeah are working together to connect young people with viable careers. Join us and learn more by visiting techforce.org today. All right, Michael, share with me what instigated this passion was or is that pivotal moment that you have for cars, that time when you went, you know what, I think I am a car guy. You have an F-14 guy. Well, I think I have to give the credit to my dad, Rob Mitchell. If it wasn't for him, he he's a car club member, number, member number 458. So he's an early car club member and he worked at BMW North America for his career. And so prior to that, when we were living up in Massachusetts, that's where the club was started. And, you know, I'd be in the back seat of his, as a little kid, three, four, five years old in the back of the 2002. And we were going to some of the club meetings up there and interacting with the car people. And then once he got on with BMW, he would take me to uh, Lime Rock every, I think it was Memorial Day weekend for um, the race there. And so I was seeing like David Hobbs in the 320i turbo race and later the M1s. It was fun to go and meet car club people and see other BMWs in other cars and racing and if it hadn't been for my dad, I wouldn't be in this role. Absolutely. You know, I was just thinking, you mentioned your dad's ID or member number. Do you know what mine is? 150,575. Your dad's got me beat by so far, I can't believe it. Uh, more than 150,000 members since then. So, And I've been a member for 25 years, so I don't know if they changed it from sequential to something else, but uh, yeah, he's got me beat. I'm a little jealous. No, it's still sequential, and I'm member number 200,000. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, and now they're, I think, into this either high fives or low 600,000s. Wow, incredible. A lot of us BMW enthusiasts out there. Very, very cool. Tell me about a really special vehicle in your life. I'm guessing it might be a BMW. I know that you bought a BMW. Your, your first one was back in 2006, I believe. But uh, what's a really special vehicle in your, your life? Is it that car? Well, it's it's going to be that car. I honestly haven't owned. I, I keep vehicles for a long time, I so do I too. typically <laughs> t don't go through them quickly. So I, 
believe it or not, even though I've been around the, the BMW world all those years, it was 2006 when I finally bought my first BMW, uh, an E3325 IS in 1989, Alpine white with black leather. And I still have the car and I absolutely love it. I've taken it to a few Oktoberfest events. I like going to the track to see the races, but I haven't gotten into doing all the driving schools. And I especially wouldn't want to do it with this car because it's way too nice and wouldn't want to take the chance of... Uh, Harming it. <laughs> Harming it. Great car. The first car we bought my son was a E46 328 CI, two-door, hardtop version. Great car. It was a wonderful car for him that he had for, gosh, all through high school and college. And then we sold it to a good friend. Great, great car. So you've had that car for 15 years now, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Long time. That's as long as I've had mine. So there you go. Well, that's just a tribute to these vehicles. If you take good care of them, they do last a long time, which is cool. I'm going to get into your head a little bit here, Michael. If you were a vehicle, if you were manifest as a vehicle, not what you want to be, but how you perceive yourself in a vehicle, what would you be? And more importantly, why? I really had to think about this one. And since... I got into this world because of my dad and, and, and his career. If you considered him as the BMW M1, then I would be the BMW M1 homage. <laughs> okay, so explain that a little bit further. Well, the homage is, in this case, a 30-year tribute car to the original M1. Now, there's not a 30-year difference for my dad and I. There's, it's only like 24 years old, I think. But, you know, it's, it's the homage is built after the original. So I'm my dad's son and, you know, I look like him and I'm a BMW enthusiast like him. So that's why I picked that car. You know, that car is insane. That car was designed by Giorgio, I believe, at Ital Design. And it's just so cool looking. I mean, it's just so cool. It looks like a I don't know, it looks like a shark coming at you or something. I mean, but they still picked up some really nice elements of the original M1 in that thing. Yeah, but I, I like the way you twisted that around. Your dad and you, and he did a nice job with that. But uh, I love that car. It's really cool. And I believe when they first came out with that, it was orange. I think the show car was a beautiful orange metallic, um, yep. maybe even a pearl, which is a lot like the the color of my Porsche Turbo when I look at it. It's got the same kind of yellowish highlights and so forth. But when you look at it next to the original M1, you can see all the attributes. It's mm -hmm. uh, just spectacular. So, yeah. Now, I'm trying to recall, do they... They never really built that car for the street. That was just a show car, basically. Is that right? As far as I know, it was just a show car, and there was ne certainly never built for production. I don't, uh, I, I don't even think I've seen pictures of uh, the interior or the engine. I think it was literally just always shown as as the car itself. Yeah, I believe they originally were going to put something like a, oh. yeah, probably like a three point five liter or maybe even a four liter, some kind of big M. M88 engine in that thing. Something crazy, I'm sure. Uh, turbocharged, maybe. Who knows? But I sure would have loved to have seen that car on the street. But like so many show cars, they don't ever quite make it. All right, we're entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off some questions, get some quick answers to some quick questions. What's one of your personal habits, Michael, that you believe has contributed to your many successes? Being a model and memorabilia collector has been a success for being the curator at the museum here. I think so, yeah. You know, for a while, I had a the full collection of the BMW art cars that I got from the actual um, auto art that made those vehicles. I love those things, and I wish I hadn't sold them all. Uh, I did, and a friend has ended up with a bunch, so at least they're at a friend's house. I can go visit them, so forth. But at one point, I just had so many models in my life that I just I had to get rid of some of them. It was a little bit getting out of control, let's say. A bit of a habit, but uh, yeah, that certainly would help somebody who's a curator. Now, if you could have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, either living or deceased, who would it be? I'm going to go with a car collector or car enthusiast, mm -hmm. and for two reasons. It's George Harrison of the Beatles, ah. because I'm also a big Beatles fan, but he had some interesting cars, and one of which was the McLaren F1. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, definitely. Well, that would be fun. You can play some tunes and talk cars. I think that'd be very, very interesting. And when it comes to automotive advice or maybe collecting automobilia, since that's what you do, is there some great advice someone else ever offered to you? Because they didn't give me the advice because I just bought way too much stuff. Well, I was going to go with the man who actually 
told me to apply for this job, who's Fred Iacino, and without him telling me about this, the, the fact that the club was moving, I, I would not have had this job and had this career to this day. Ah, uh, You know, some people talk about luck, and I don't really believe in luck. I think it's when opportunity and preparation cross paths, and that's definitely sounds like what happened to you with his suggestion and his advice, how fortuitous, and the fact that you take that advantage of that situation and seek out, let me look into this a little deeper uh, versus going, how could there be a career in that? Forget it and go on with your day because look at where it landed you. So great words of wisdom there. How about resources? Are there some great resources you'd like to share with our listeners? Sure. Our website is www.bmwccafoundation.org. And um, you can see the current and past exhibits there. Check out what the foundation is about. Absolutely. I'd encourage you to go there. I'll put a link on Michael Shono's page. I'm, I'm going to add another one here that is really important if you have young people in your life uh, is the streetsurvival.org website uh, for you can find out where you can send kids to go to spend a day and learn how to be safer, better drivers. It will save a life, I guarantee you. So that's another good one I'll put on Michael's resources list. Is there a book you've read you'd like to share? I'm going to plug one of the uh, exhibit books from the, the foundation. Uh, last year was Passion 50 Years of BMW Cars and Community, or I should say 2019 at this point. And although all the exhibit books are great, they're all written by Jackie Jure. If you want to know more about the club and the history of the club, that's the one book to uh, pick up. It's a great book, and Jackie's been a guest on the show. You can go to the Car Show website and listen to my talk with her. Uh, amazing. I enjoy the writing that she does for the club and for other publications. Another one is Satch Carlson, who's been a guest here, of course. He's the uh, editor-in-chief at Roundell, which is a club magazine, which is a wonderful magazine. Having been a member of the club for so long, I've been reading Roundell forever. It's got some great contributors to it as well. And if you join the club, you get that magazine as part of your club membership. And it's a really nice publication. But that book, Passion 50 Years Yeah by Jackie, is awesome. All right, we are up to the checkered flag. And this last question can be a bit of a doozy, but it's a fun thought. I'm going to buy you... A cool collector car today, Michael. Anything you'd like. What am I going to park in your garage? How about the McLaren F1 with the BMW V12 engine? <laughs> how about that? Yeah, how about that? Oh my goodness, you're going to cost me a pretty penny. You know, that car has become the modern day Ferrari GTO collectible. It has just went into the stratosphere of collectability. So let's talk about that car a little bit. What is it other than that marvelous BMW engine that they stuffed in that thing? that you love so much about that car? Just uh, such a unique vehicle. I've had the opportunity to only see two uh, of the street cars, both of them in, in museums, and uh, then the one race car that uh, BMW of North America owns and brings to uh, many, many events. And um, just, it's such a unique vehicle to go with the ultimate BMW motor powered vehicle, I, you know, you would, I would think of the McLaren F1. How could you do any better? I'll tell you a quick story, Michael. My son and I were at Pebble Beach Car Week. We were in front of the lodge at Pebble Beach. I believe it was a couple of days before the actual Concours. I know we were there waiting for a tour to come in. It was coming in from Seattle, of these old cars that come down and uh, participate. And this guy pulls up in front of the lodge in a silver McLaren F1. It has Colorado plates and it's covered in the front with bugs. And he steps out of that thing, of course, center seat. So he crawls out of that thing. Hard to step out of those cars. And my son, had not, he was younger and he'd not seen one. He goes, dad, what's that? And I go, well, let's go over and talk to the guy. So we went over and said, did you really just drive this from Colorado? And he goes, yeah. And looking at the front covered in bugs, I'm like, well, good for you. I mean, who, who does that? You know, jumps in a car like that and drives all the way from Colorado. And he let my son crawl in and sit in that thing. And I think at that point, point my son really started becoming more interested in mclaren so much so that he wanted to paint one of the walls in his bedroom <laughs> mclaren orange which it still is today by the way i won't let my wife change it uh so if i could get you that mclaren or let's say when i get you that mclaren we'll be positive here what color would you like yours to be oh wow um how about blue blue okay a nice uh, bmw blue a deep rich blue maybe 
Yeah. Yeah, they make some great blues for sure. Okay, I'll get to work on that for you. Uh, it may take me a little while because there's not many of those around and most people don't want to let go of them. But you made a nice choice, Michael. Thank you for taking me on a great ride today. We've had some fun. I hope you have too. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. Before I let you go, and before you drive off into the sunset in that McLaren F1, is there a little parting piece of wisdom or guidance you might leave us with? You know, if you have the opportunity to work in a career that is similar to your hobbies, eventually it really won't feel like it's work at all. Absolutely. I think Henry Ford said that probably best. Uh, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah, it might be work and some days might be a little more challenging than others, but you'll still have a smile on your face every day when you go home. That's for sure. What's the best way that our listeners can learn more about BMW, the foundation and the museum? www.bmwccafoundation.org. And then as you said, the streetsurvival.org if you want to learn about the teen driving program. Also, we're on Facebook under BMW CCA Foundation, as well as Tire X Street Survival and on Instagram as well. Absolutely. And you don't have to own a BMW if you want to join the club. Uh, they welcome everybody. So if you aspire to have a BMW one day, you can join. It's a great way to meet people. And if you're looking for a BMW... They have a section in the back where people are selling cars. Typically, club members take a little better care of their cars, I think. So you can find great cars. You can reach out to people, people in the club, and ask them questions about BMWs if you're looking to put one of those in your garage. So I encourage you to join them. And if you're in in, uh, South Carolina, hey, visit the museum. Now, do you have a date that you guys are going to be fully open, or are you open now? We are fully open, and the Genesis exhibit will close on Friday, May 21st. Uh, 2021. And then we'll be working on the next exhibit. We don't have an official name for it right now, but we're going to do the 20th. It's the 25th anniversary of the BMW Z3 Roadster. And the Z Series Car Club is going to do their 25th anniversary Z Homecoming here in town. And so we're going to do a Z car exhibit from the Z1 through um, the Z8 and many Z3 and Z4 models in between and a couple of race cars. Homecoming is July 4th through the 10th this year and we're going to open up the exhibit just before then very cool z cars are great Uh, i had a guest on the show back at the end of february todd somerville from modal who has a z and m version of the z car loves that thing and he's a big guy but he has to kind of origami himself to crawl into that thing but he loves that vehicle so that sounds like a fun exhibit and i assume all of these will be listed on the website right Yes. Okay, cool. Listeners, you can find everything that Michael has shared on his show notes page. Just go to carsyad.com, type in Michael Mitchell, and that page will pop right up. Michael, thank you for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your world with us today. This has been fun. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you know that Cars Yeah! is in the top 1% of all podcasts based on listenership According to Libsyn, the premier RSS feed for podcasts in the United States. That's right. And Cars Yeah! is the only five-day-a-week automotive-focused podcast for you to get your message into the ears of thousands of listeners daily from all over the world. Plus, DuPont Registry recommended Cars Yeah! is one of their top 10 car podcasts for you to enjoy. Cars Yeah! has experienced tremendous growth, plus your ads are evergreen, meaning they never go away. And more and more listeners find Cars Yeah! every day for their daily dose of automotive inspiration. Do you want to expose your brand to a highly targeted list of automotive enthusiasts in a very unique and very personal way? Well, I can help you. Contact me, Mark Green, at mark at carsyeah.com or through the website at carsyeah.com today to learn more. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Yeah!